Well, hello, all you wonderful people, and happy Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got, as usual, Facebook here and Instagram here, so I'm going to be going back and forth. Um, and I am happy to answer. Why that keeps happening? Anyway, I am happy to answer any questions that you have to. Hello, thanks so much for joining. Okay, so um, I'm happy to answer questions. Go ahead and post them as you join in in the comment section, and uh, we'll we'll get those going for you. Um, I decided today that we're going to talk a little bit about rotation and elimination diets because. Um, I have a client who her dog is just bless his heart. I mean, poor, poor thing. He is so sensitive to so many things and she is just having such a difficult time. And I feel, I feel for her. It is just one of those things. So it, it made me, you know, decide that that's what we're going to chat about today. So it doesn't have to be about the rotation and elimination diets specifically. Um, if, if you have other questions outside of that, but if you do have questions, if you don't know what it is, we're going to talk about that. Um, if you don't know how to do it, we're going to talk about that. If you don't know why uh, it's beneficial, we're going to talk about that as well. So all of that we're going to cover today in hopefully the next 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, as you're joining in, again, comment ask questions, doesn't have to be about the rotation and elimination diet, but that's what we're chatting about today. So um, I'm not going to give any specific details about the client because, you know, they may not want me to, but uh, we'll talk just kind of in general about the rotation and elimination diet. And so first off, what is it? If you've never heard of it, hello, hello. If you have never heard of a rotation and elimination diet, that's okay. You are not alone. Uh, basically, what we are doing with a rotation and elimination diet is testing different ingredients, different foods, individual foods over a short period of time, hopefully, but depending on how many foods we need to test, it can be a longer period of time to see if a dog or a cat, we can do this with a cat too, um, has a sensitivity to that food. Now, different animals are going to show sensitivities in different ways. Um, if you have gotten to the point where you are looking into a rotation and elimination, elimination diet, you probably already know how your pet kind of reacts to, to different foods that they are sensitive to. And so you know what you're looking for, though, again, you know, it's not one thing. There's a spectrum that your dog or cat could be showing symptoms of sensitivities to a food. Um, and there are some nuances that we can talk about as well. Um, but basically that's what a rotation and elimination diet is. It is testing different foods. So we're talking like we would test beef, we would test pork, we would test chicken, we would test turkey, anything else you could get access to, venison, um, quail, whatever you have access to that could be fed to your pet, we would want to test it. Now, one really cool way to get started and kind of give you a leg up on figuring out what your pet may or may not be sensitive to is a, a there are a couple of different tests and they kind of test a little bit differently. One of them you can kind of see in the background here on, on Facebook. And <coughs> oh, thank you. The UPS drivers across the street. Um, turn that here so you can see right there. The um, Glacier Peaks has a life stress and wellness uh, scan. And it does, uh, a te uh, the test is both saliva and hair. And it tests like, I, I want to say it's like 300 plus different things, not just food, but also like environmental allergens and chemicals and all, all the things to see where your pet may have sensitivities. Um, another one that is more specific to food is NutriScan. 
I've heard good things about both of these, and there are probably more on the market that I'm just not very familiar with. But that can give you like they're not necessarily none of them are 100 percent accurate, um, but it gives us a really good range, a really good ballpark um, to start out with and see, OK, we probably don't want to try these that the, the scans are showing sensitivities to. Let's start with the ones that um, your pet is not testing for sensitivities to, and then we can kind of go from there. So if you don't have access to a scan or you don't want to do a scan, of course, you can do this on your own um, by taking the time to literally write down every single ingredient of every single thing that your pet has eaten in the last six months. That's pretty cumbersome, but doable if necessary. Um, and then, of course, we would have to take into account that there are often times how do I want to say this? DNA or um, food molecules found in some commercial foods that may not be listed on the ingredient label. That is something that has definitely been known to happen. So we would want to um, understand that we may be missing some things if we're just writing everything down that has been going on, you know, in that we know of that your dog has eaten in the last six months or so. So what, what we do is we will create three different rotation and elimination diet recipes. These are not balanced recipes. These are designed to use for a very short period of time to start testing to see what your pet can handle and eliminate foods that they are sensitive to so we know what foods your pet can eat that they are not sensitive to. Now, why is this necessary? Why do some pets need this? And why do why are we seeing so many? I would I would venture to say cats as well, but let's say dogs because people are much more aware, I think, of dog food sensitivities right now. Um, well, there are a number of reasons. We live in a toxic world, right? And so a lot of, and on top of that, a lot of commercially avail available pet foods may not have super high quality ingredients in them. Um, they also may have a lot of glyphosate in them. They may also have a lot of other toxins like aflatoxins and mycotoxins in them. And all of these can cause your dog or cat, or by the way, you as a human, <laughs> if you happen to be eating not so great foods, um, body to start to reject it creates inflammation in the body. Um, it creates what we call dysbiosis in the gut, um, meaning that the gut isn't happy, basically. If, if I had to boil it down and break it down into like the simplest terms, the gut is not happy. Um, and what can and ultimately oftentimes does happen is something called leaky gut. And that's kind of a really trendy thing right now is uh, that people are talking about leaky gut. And very sadly, our dogs are experience it, experiencing leaky gut syndrome or dysbiosis of the gut at extremely high rates, uh, primarily due to those three things. One, poor quality ingredients in the food. And I know a lot of us are sitting here going, I buy the absolute best quality food I can for my pet. I, I get it and you are doing the best you can and good on you. And I understand. Um, sadly, a lot of manufacturers, you know, the, the marketing practices that these companies are allowed to do are quite honestly, in my opinion, 
not, um, not okay. You know, they lead us to believe things that are not necessarily true of the food you are buying. Um, so poor quality ingredients, glyphosate, oh my goodness, right? Glyphosate in the food, um, I, that's so hard to get away from. You know, we would we would need to source our own individual ingredients and make sure that they are organic. Um, and even then, I mean, our the earth, the U.S. especially, um, so the soil is just so c contaminated. We, you know, certified organic is going to be one of the best things we can look for. And then other toxins in the food, as we were talking about aflatoxins, mycoto mycotoxins, other toxins that can be in the food um, from primary, I, I would say primarily uh, storage, poor storage conditions of ingredients uh, um, used to make the pet food. So all of these things, plus, again, we live in a toxic world. We live in a toxic environment. So um, you know, all the chemicals that are in our home that we're using to clean in our home that we're spraying in our yards that we are, you know, lighting a candle or plug ins that we're trying to make the air smell better in our home, like all of these things are contributing to a much greater extent in our pets for two, a couple of reasons. They are so much smaller than us. They are so much closer to the ground. They don't have protect chin on like we do clothing socks and then they they lick themselves to clean themselves so they are just their exposure rate is so much greater than we are in the exact same environment so all of all of these things together plus there are some that i haven't even gotten into because you know we all know how our water like like the rain water anymore isn't even clean. <laughs> this is just sad. We just live in a toxic world, but there are some things we can do. We can't control that right now. I mean, we can, we can make progress as a human race and that is something we need to do, but um, individually in our homes with our pets, there are some things we can do. And one of those things oftentimes is a rotation and elimination diet. So, Let's really quickly talk a little bit more about leaky gut so you understand a little bit better what that is. So inside of the gut, the um, lining of the gut is made up of epithelial cells. And if you've heard that word before, it's because our skin is also made of epithelial cells. So that is probably where you have heard that word before, um, probably in a biology class somewhere along the way. So they're, they're made up of, it's made up of the same, the lining is the same cell structure as our skin. And this is true in us, this is true in our dogs, this is true in our cats. And on the lining of the gut, there are these like little, what is the word? The word is escaping me, but they look like little microphilia and they, they move around. They're not super static. They're attached, but they're not super static. Like, you know, every, everything moves just like we do. And they are designed to be able to move, but not break apart from one another so that anything going through the di digestive system is not getting through out outside of the gut lining, right? It is staying within the gut. Now, when you have leaky gut, they don't stay together really, really well. So they kind of move a little bit more like this, right? They're moving around a little bit more like this. And sadly, they can get even wider, but we any, any um, gaps can allow different cell particles from the food that we are our pets have eaten to get through the lining of the digestive system, through the lining of the gut. And when that happens, that is something that is not supposed to be in the body outside of the digestive tract. So our bodies, our dog's bodies, our cat's bodies, the immune system says that's not supposed to be here. And it 
it initiates an attack and creates inflammation. And this is ultimately what leads to leaky gut. It sounds just like what I described, right? The gut is leaking and that initiates an immune, an immune response. So the immune, the immune system starts attacking the food because it's not supposed to be there. So when your pet eats that food that the immune system has built up a response to, anytime that pet eats that food, even if it's not necessarily getting through <laughs> the gut lining, it says, that's not supposed to be here. Boom, inflammation happens again because the body says, no, this isn't supposed to be here. Inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. We got to get rid of this. So that is why the rotation and elimination diet can be so necessary for these animals. And also why oftentimes when a pet does have leaky gut syndrome, dysbiosis in the gut, um, leaky gut specifically, they start having symptoms, like the, the skin becomes red and inflamed because if you remember, I just told you the lining of the gut is made of epithelial cells, just like the skin is made of epithelial cells. So when that immune response happens in the body, it doesn't know, it doesn't differentiate. They're both epithelial cells. So the, the skin is often our first indication because our pets can't tell us how they feel, right? It's often our first indication that something is wrong in the gut. So that is why we do rotation and elimination diets. And we see what the body has an immune response to. And we initially, at least, avoid those foods and create diets, balanced diets, based on the foods that our dog does not have sensitivities to, meaning they don't have, they have not built up an immune response to. These are generally items that, uh, food items that that pet hasn't eaten before ever, or at least in the last, since they, the symptoms started, which is why we want to go back at least six months if we're doing this by hand manually. <laughs> and so for some, some dogs, it can be really difficult to find food items that haven't been introduced to them because unknowingly we're like, okay, they're not doing well on that food. So I'm going to try another one. And they're not doing well on that food, so I'm going to try another one. And we try all these different foods. So we've introduced all these different foods with all these different ingredients to our pets, not knowing that because they have leaky gut, the immune system is attacking anything getting through the lining of the gut, creating an immune response creating sensitivities, creating often, very, very often, redness and irritation and inflammation on the skin. So it's this vicious cycle. So we have to use a rotation and elimination diet to find out what uh, your pet is not currently sensitive to, to build balanced diets off of that. And then we want to uh, take at least three different balanced recipes and feed one a day. So every 24 hours, her dog is getting something different. So as we are working to heal the gut, which is something we kind of do separately <laughs> from, we, we can add ingredients into the diet to help heal the gut, herbs and different things to help heal the gut. Um, S. Bilardi, Bilardii is, is great. Saccharomyces Bilardii is, is one, just one thing that's really great for that. Um, hello, hello. Uh, 
so while we are healing the gut, we want to every day, our dog is getting something different. So we have these three or four or five, hopefully <laughs> different recipes that we can, one day they're getting this, the next day they're getting this, the next day they're getting another one and then move, you know, rotate them so that the immune system doesn't have the opportunity to create immune attacks because they're not eating the same thing over and over and over and over again, giving the immune system time to build up the attack to the immune response. So that's where the rotation part comes in while we are healing the gut. And depending on how long your pet has been suffering from a leaky gut, um, you know, it can, it can take some time to heal the gut once we figure everything out. Um, every animal is different, of course, but that's the basis of what a rotation and elimination diet is and why we use it, why it is so effective as well. So that's basically it, you guys. I wanted to talk to you about it a little bit. Um, that is something that I help people with, if that's something you need help with. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly something that I think having having a holistic health practitioner on your side can not only help you through the process, but um, help kind of give you boosts along the way because I have found with my clients that it can be really disheartening every time you find something that another ingredient that your dog is sensitive to is like, man, my goodness. And um, so having somebody on your side cheering you on, hey, look what, what we have found that has worked can really be a huge help in getting you through the process and getting your pet through the process. And then also with the helping to heal the gut part, helping to helping the gut heal itself part, right? Once we figure out um, a good three, hopefully more uh, recipes with foods that your dog is not sensitive to at the moment. So we can just keep those on rotation. So, so we can allow your dog's body to do what it needs to do to heal and of course help it along the way. So that's basically, that's basically it. Um, if you happen to watch this at a later date or you're just tuning in uh, and you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video. Send me a DM if you don't want to comment on the video. That's okay, too. Um, and if this is something that you or someone you know needs help with with their pet, uh, definitely send them my way because um, it can be it can be difficult, not impossible, but difficult emotionally, especially to do on your own. So with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week leading into the weekend. Also, if you happen to be local to Georgetown, Texas on Saturday, March 4th, um, I will be at Pathology on Williams Drive from 12 to 2. Uh, Pam, Pam from Perfectly Holistic will also be there, as well as Janet, who owns Pupology. Um, And you guys already know that Pam, Janet, and myself, we have a podcast called Pet Health Junkies. So um, really, really cool that we get to kind of do some events together at Pupology every once in a while. There will also be dogs available for adoption uh, there on Saturday and a couple other local business owners. So I do help cats. T uh, Tony, is that Tony? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me know what you need help with with your cat and we can chat and see if, if uh, it's something that is going to work for you and your cat. So with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and weekend, and I will talk to you guys later.